In today's video, I'm going to take a look at the stock market. Um, I'm going to compare this to what happened back in February because I think we're um, potentially creating a very similar, very dangerous um, environment here. So, um, you know, way back here in November and December, I, I started cautioning people that um, stocks were, uh, you know, potentially setting up for uh, some kind of crash event. And uh, the, the problem is when one of these runaway moves gets started like this, <clears throat> you get a potential tops like like this was a potential double top. You know, in real time, this looked like a top intraday. This looked like a top. This certainly looked like a top and, and they all get reversed. Remember, this was as the Fed was pumping billions of dollars into the repo market. <clears throat> and so it trains people to. Um, ignore these corrective moves. Uh, they, ex you know, if enough of these get reversed, then people just become convinced that that they will all get reversed, and there's no risk in the market, and so they they buy every dip, and then at some point the top comes, and and it no longer looks like a top anymore. And so um, people uh, aren't aren't nervous when we get you know get start a corrective move here. And I would say even at this point, they're probably not not too nervous. Um, <clears throat> and so they end up getting caught in the, in the correction when it begins. And remember, this is this is when I was getting emails telling me that I, I was an idiot for um, calling for a market crash. Uh, and then and then the crash begins and we get this move down and and then we, we get a bounce. Usually you'll get some kind of bounce. And if you remember, this is the point at which I had the troll emailing me, telling me I, w I was an idiot, that I'd missed the bottom. And, uh, and the, you know, he was a genius. He picked the exact bottom. And then, of course, uh, the, B the C wave began. Most intermediate cycle lows have at least an ABC pattern. Sometimes they have more waves, but, but usually at least an ABC. And so at this point, the, the C wave hadn't started yet. And so... Uh, this fellow that bought in here, you know, he he get he got caught in the C wave down, and I imagine he probably sold everything down here, you know, right about here. That's when the uh, the emails quit coming. Um, but we're we're getting in a similar situation here. Every dip has been um, reversed. The, the Fed is central banks everywhere are just printing trillions of dollars uh, to counteract. The, the recession that was caused by the um, COVID-19 and that global, global lockdown. So every correction gets reversed. Um, you know, in, in real time, this looked like a top. And, and I saw every one of these, I saw YouTube videos, numerous YouTube videos, calling a top, calling a top, calling a top, definitely calling a top, calling a top here. And they, they've all been wrong. And so now... Um, the, the bears are afraid to call tops anymore, and many of them are are becoming uh, converts. And now they they believe that the market can only only go up. They they've been wrong for so long that now they've finally decided to switch sides. And they're they're in the bull camp. And uh, now everybody is convinced that that any corrective move is is going to be reversed soon. Uh, and higher highs will, will be made. And, and and that's what happens in a runaway move. They all do until they don't. And when you get really stretched like this, the risk is that the um, move down, um, you know, vertical moves up are met by vertical moves down. And we are in that kind of an environment right now where the market is going straight up. And so... Uh, retail traders are, are becoming more and more confident that it's easy to make money. They, they've convinced themselves this is an easy way to get rich. In the meantime, smart money is getting very nervous. There's just too much white space between price here and this long-term moving average. Too much risk of another uh, waterfall uh, crash event. And, and again, we're, we're going to be due for an intermediate cycle low. So so more than likely, we're going to have another one of these patterns of an A wave down, a B wave bounce, and then a C wave uh, to complete the pattern. So the first 
um, the first bounce because people have become conditioned to expect every uh, correction to um, get negated soon and price to continue up. So, so when we get the first bounce, they're going to, um, you know, recent memory is going to tell them that that was the bottom and, and they're going to, first off, they're going to, they're going to hold and they're going to get caught in the top. And then when that first bounce comes, they're going to think, you know, that, that, you know, the correction's over and, and we're on our way back up again. And, uh, and then they'll get caught in the second leg down. So, um, Despite what your emotions are telling you, this is becoming a very dangerous market. Uh, the, the only thing that would change this is if if we are getting ready to uh, transition into a, a bubble phase. And then if that's the case, then this thing will just go up for about a year and, and then it uh, will crash. But I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think um, the bubble phase is still out 10, 12 years from now, um, bubbles typically form when, um, you know, we, we start to get oversaturation and irrational behavior. Uh, I think that would be marked by, you know, thousands of companies all piling into the um, artificial intelligence space, kind of similar to what, what was happening at the top of the Bitcoin bubble. Um, and I'm not seeing that yet. I, I think... Um, the new technologies, uh, AI, nanotech, um, biotech, robotics, all those, all those new technologies, I think they're at best in the adolescent stage. I don't think they're mature yet. So I don't think that, that this is, uh, I don't think we're ready to transition into the bubble phase. I think this is just uh, central banks printing too much money, uh, trying to uh, combat the recession that was created by uh, locking down the global economy for the COVID virus. And it's um, creating this um, just semi-irrational move uh, that is probably going to give us, a, you know, another crash event. Not, not as extreme as this one, I don't think. But you can see what this insane monetary policy is doing. It, it's starting to create these volatile back and forth moves like this uh, as um, the fundamentals uh, and regression forces pull the market back down and then the central banks push it up, but they push it way too far to the upside. So, so we're getting this violent pendulum back and forth. Uh, and, it, and I think... Um, I think this is going to continue. I think uh, at, at some point, and like I've said in my previous videos, I have no idea how to call a top. I, I have never been able to come up with any strategy to consistently call tops. I've never seen anybody um, develop any kind of consistent strategy for calling tops. So I don't know when this is going to roll over and give us the next violent move down, but I'm 100% but I'm, uh, sure it is. Uh, unless we're starting a bubble phase. And like I said, I, I think it's too early for that yet. So uh, I think this is, um, at, at some point soon, this is going to uh, top. And then uh, all of these people that have become conditioned to buy every single dip are going to get caught in another um, semi-crash event. And, uh, and I don't think it's at all out of the question that uh, the NASDAQ here can come back down to, to test this 200-day moving average. So uh, the, the only only strategy that I have ever come up with is just uh, you have to control greed. Decide when you have made enough money, be happy, get out, don't worry where the market goes after that, and then just wait until the crash happens. You know, it was a long wait uh, here for this uh, to top and the crash to happen, but it, but it eventually did, and we were waiting for it. So, you know, we didn't catch the exact top, but we did catch almost the exact bottom. So, you know, we, we missed out on some profit here simply because, you know, I just don't know any way to pick these uh, tops, but I do have a pretty good uh, formula for picking the bottom. So it didn't really matter that we couldn't pick the top. All we needed to do was pick the bottom. And um, now we're just, <clears throat> you know, some people have been satisfied. I mean, they, they got in way down here. Uh, and... Uh, most people took profits here when we when we um, reached this uh, you know, when we 
hit the all-time highs again right in here. And then we, uh, you know, it was getting a little late in the, uh, in the cycle. And then we, uh, on this move down here, I, uh, I noted in my uh, daily reports that I thought the uh, central bank's pr the plunge protection team had stopped the daily cycle low, and so we bought on this swing. Now, um, you know, we're just long, and you've got two options. You can just at some point just be happy with your gains, take your profits, get on the sidelines, wait for the next intermediate cycle low, wherever it comes. Uh, or my other suggestion was just to use the 10-day moving average as your stop if if price closes back below the 10-day moving average, then then get out and uh, just be happy with your gains, and uh, and then just wait for the next intermediate cycle low, and and this is how you can massively outperform uh, the S&P over time. You don't have to pick exact tops. Uh, I can't do it. I don't know anybody that's that has done it consistently over the years. So uh, trying to do it. Um, usually just ends up getting you caught uh, in you know, these crash events when price gets stretched way too far above the moving averages. Uh, but right now, uh, this, this is just a very dangerous market. When the top comes, um, the odds are pretty good that we're going to get uh, you know, another, some kind of uh, uh, mini crash event, and, and I... As far as this is stretched above the 200-day moving average, I'm going to say the odds are very, very high that we're going to at least come back down to test it. And uh, and maybe, uh, you know, we get another violent move that goes back below it. As these volatile swings uh, keep getting amplified.